Hurricane Lee becomes the first Category 5 storm of the Atlantic season. <coughs> so, um, Hurricane Lee, although it is quite a distance from the United States at the moment, it has been shown to be a Category 5 storm. And at the moment, packing winds up to 160 miles per hour as it churns through the Caribbean. So this story is from the BBC. And it says it could cause dangerous beach conditions on the US East Coast on Sunday. And in its current path, it's not projected to make landfall anywhere. So, um... I don't understand how it's not going to make any landfall anywhere on its current path. Um, so here's the path here. It's here. Saturday it'll be here. Sunday it'll be here. Tuesday it'll be here. So it looks like it's going to go like that. But it might come across here and go like that. So... I don't understand how it's not going to make any landfall anywhere unless it just goes round in a circle and fizzles out. Um, I find that a bit confusing. <clears throat> so let's see what else it says. Um, well, it's the 12th named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season, which runs from June to November. And it rapidly intensified from a category one within the span of hours. And it's to it's it's expected to remain a major hurricane through early next week. Although they are saying that there's going to be dangerous surf and rip currents, um, they don't expect it to make landfall. <coughs> In the uh, New York Times, it says that the hur the Atlantic hurricane will cause rip currents on the Caribbean and on the east coast of the US starting Friday. Experts, however, don't know for sure where the storm is going. So there are three active storms currently. Um, so this one is a Category 2 storm. And this is Jova with uh, wind gusts of 130 miles per hour. It's on a track that's not going to take it anywhere near the United States and then we've got this smaller hurricane here Margot wind goes to 50 miles an hour that could intensify um, depending on which way it goes if it comes this way because the water is warmer it'll get stronger but if it goes that way because the water is colder it'll get it'll lose its strength and we've got this one now this is a category 5 storm already and it's, uh, it's got wind gusts of up to 200 miles per hour. It intensified very rapidly within 12 hours from a Category 1 storm to a Category 4 storm. And now it's a Category 5 storm. This is a time lapse showing you Hurricane Lee and where it went from a Category 1 very quickly over the space of 12 hours to a Category 5 storm. And that is today, the 8th of September. And they still don't know which track it's going to take. The likelihood is it's going to come this way. I mean, it might come this way. It might go hit Florida, carry on, and then come this way and go up. It could go this way. If it goes this way, it might lose its strength. I mean, it could come in a curveball towards New York. There's, from all the other hurricanes that I've seen previously, they nearly always come this way, in my opinion. They come in this direction because of the rotation of the earth and because the, the waters are really warm here. They tend to come in this direction. So if it's a Category 5 storm now, if it stays in the heated water... It could even get stronger than that. I don't think I've heard of a Category 6 storm before and I don't know if there is such a category, but it could stay a Category 5 storm. And uh, so it could be very dangerous indeed because normally when they're in the Atlantic here, 
to start off very small like this, like a tropical storm, and then they usually steer like a category two, and then as it gets into the warmer waters, that's when the category increases. But to have a category five storm all the way out here, it's very concerning indeed. So if we look at the sea surface temperature, we can see where it's red. This is the hottest part where it's deeper red. That's where it's the hottest. And at the moment, it's in the hot sea here. So if it continues on this path, it's likely to stay a category five. But even if it drops down to a category four, it's still going to be a strong hurricane. And then it could increase again once it, if it gets into this basin here. The heat from the water could increase and intensify even further. So it is very worrying at the moment. In Thursday morning's discussion, the National Hurricane Centre forecaster, Dan Zelensky, wrote, Many of the computer forecast models are calling for remarkable rates of intensification beyond rates normally seen with model forecasts. So that's quite scary to think that they're going to be, um, the rates are going to be beyond rates normally seen with model forecasts. So maybe they are going to start and have a Category 6 hurricane. It's just that when the hurricanes are out to sea like this, they're normally low categories. It's only when they come further inland when they hit a higher intensity of the heat in the water, that they strengthen into Category 4s and Category 5s. Now, Category 5s is very rare anyway. There's only been around 35 hurricanes in the Atlantic that's reached a Category 5 in history. So, um, so here's where they will go in the next five days. Fortunately, Lee Centre is forecast by computer models to pass north of the northern Leeward Islands, including Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. So this is what they're predicting to go this way. Those areas could still see outer bands of showers, possibly heavy at times, some gusty winds, dangerous surf and rip currents, particularly along north and northeast facing coasts. This forecast is a high confidence forecast. Next week's forecast is uncertain for Bermuda, Atlantic Canada and possibly the northeast United States. A northward turn is expected next week, but where this new trajectory takes Lee is considerably less certain. A combination of factors will determine where Lee eventually goes next week. How strong and expansive the Bermuda Azores high is at the time over the Western Atlantic is one. The placement of a southward plunge in the jet stream spreading towards the eastern US is two. So are they now thinking it's not going to be sharp? The curve, the recurve, is not going to be sharp enough to avoid all land areas. Lee will eventually make a right hand turn to the north next week, but its steering winds may not allow it to curl. North is sharp enough to avoid either a direct hit or a graze of at least parts of, La of Atlantic Canada late next week. So they're thinking even if it does turn north, it could still hit. Um, and and um, Canada, Atlantic Canada may get hit. So searching for the past like historical data from the hurricanes in the past that were a cat four or cat five so the cat fours are pink the cat fives are purple so you can have a look here so once the hurricane started here you know can you see any pink or purple here i mean they can become pink once they get near here like near cuba <clears throat> and purple here, but once they're out here, where Lee is, it's very rare to see a Cat 5 hurricane out here. It's usually only when they get here in the warmer waters that they get an increase in intensity. <clears throat> so if we have a look at the colours, Category 5 is purple, Category 4 is pink, Category 3 is red, Category 2 is orange and Category 1 is yellow. 
And then I saw the ones I'd hit Houston. So when they were out here, they were only a category, like like minor categories or tropical storms. But Ike did turn into a category five here by the looks of things. So you can, if you click on the line, this is on uh, the <coughs> NOAA historical hurricane tracks. If you click on the line, it'll show you when it was a category. It was a tropical storm, it was green, and it turned into a category. <coughs> so it was a category four there. So category four went to a three went to a four and then it went to a two before it hit. So that's Ike in 2008. So if we have a look at Hurricane Lee, we can see um, today is the 8th of September. So here it is where we are at the moment. Actually, that was the seventh. Uh, this is the eighth. Category five with speeds 160 miles an hour. And if we look where that is, so it's it's uh, it's almost you know parallel to like Antigua and Barbuda here, or like Puerto Rico slightly north. And if we have a look at the track it's taken, so. It's come like this, bounced down, gone up, gone up, and then it's doing that. So it might just do that. So Irma, 2017. So if we click on Irma, we can see Irma here was... Remember, it's like parallel with Antigua, and uh, that was a category five. If we click on that, that was a category five, and that was on the sixth of September. So it's around the same time of year. And uh, if we look at the track, Irma took. So it was a category five to here, category four, category five, five. Category four, three, two, category four, category four. And then when it hit, it was a category three by the looks of things. <clears throat> so because of the position where it is now and the strength it is now, I mean, it could take the same track as Irma. So in this model, you can see that the people who have made this model at weatheronline.co.uk have got it heading north. But as it heads north, it increases in size. So you can see it starts to get very large indeed. And it looks like it's increasing intensity. And it's heading towards the northeastern United States. And Nova Scotia is where it's made impact, according to this weather model. So the key messages for Hurricane Lee are, it's a dangerous Category 5 hurricane, further strengthening is possible. Lee's core is expected to move well north of the northern Leeward Islands, the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico this weekend and early next week. Dangerous surf and life-threatening rip currents are likely in the northern Leeward Islands beginning later today. These conditions will spread westwards and northwards, affecting Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas and Bermuda through the weekend. It is way too soon to know what level of impacts, if any, Lee might have along the US East Coast, Atlantic Canada or Bermuda later next, late next week, particularly since the hurricane is expected to slow down considerably over the southwestern Atlantic. Regardless, dangerous surf and rip currents are expected along most of the US East Coast beginning Sunday. Continue to monitor updates to Lee's forecast during the next several days. So it's one to watch. 
Thanks for watching this video. Until the next one, bye for now.